It could be a lonely business comedy. It's not like being in a band. We've got other band members to jump around on stage with and rattle up and down the country in a tour bus. It's just you and your microphone. You've got no roadies looking after you. You've certainly got a lot less groupies. It can be quite a lonely, isolated, solitary experience. But on the other hand, you don't have as many overheads. You don't have the equipment tire. You don't have the lighting rigs to set up. You don't have roadies to hire. And you don't have to split the money with band members who secretly you think are less talented than you. Which means you've got a lot more cash left over with which to buy friends. Hmm. Swings and roundabouts. Straight away, I can see you all looking at me. You're looking at me and thinking, yes, we want to hear some of this guy's views on life. Because obviously, I've been around a bit. <laughs> hmm. So long as you listen to me, Harrogate, that's all I'm asking. So long as you listen to me, because generally, people don't pay any attention to a face like mine unless I'm saying, do you want fries with that? <laughs> oh, it's too great. Room full of complete strangers staring at me, expecting me to entertain them. Just like every family Christmas I've ever known, it really is. <laughs> All family Christmases around our way were famous. You'd get everybody in the street there to see Monkey Boy dance. And you'd always get, you'd always get someone like you on the front row going, ah, oh, look at him, dance, you bastard, come on. Look, he looks like a little girl, doesn't he? I know, I've got this pink dress. We'll make him wear the pink dress and dance for us. Come on, dance, you bastard, dance for us like you told to. And I'd be like, thanks a lot, Dad. And, um... <laughs> you know, when I told my friends I wanted to be a stand-up comedian, they all laughed. Well, nobody's laughing now! <laughs> yeah. And my dad's dyslexic. <laughs> he still thinks I want to be a stand-up chameleon. <laughs> it's crazy. I love music, man. I've always loved music. You know, when I was 14, I had Kurt Cobain all over my wall. Mind you, so did Courtney Love. <laughs> and I've been listening to a lot of Radiohead recently, you know, just to cheer myself up. Because <laughs> I've, I've just split up with my girlfriend. Aww. Oh, thanks. You, you, you're just taking the piss now. You just all sat there going, you've never had a girlfriend. <laughs> Fuck off. You know, because that's what women want, in it? A greasy student with no dress sense at all. <laughs> You know, it's really hard, and I don't know how I'm going to get a new girlfriend because I can't, I can't chat up girls in the club. I can't pull girls. You know, I see some guys, they just chat them, take them home, and it just amazes me, you know? My technique is normally I see a girl in a club, stand staring at her, you know, follow her home. <laughs> stand outside her window going... <laughs> you know, some call it stalking, but hey, open your minds. <laughs> Great. Three people over there laughed. Everyone else is trying to work out whether or not I could be a stalker. Mm. Hey, you're still trying to work it out. I mean, you there, you're laughing. I mean, do, you, do you think I could be a stalker? Really? No. no. What's your name? <laughs> What's your address? What's your telephone number? No, no, of course, of course I'm joking. I already know all that, and, um... <laughs> That's great, she just went, ha-ha! What? 